Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Simple Gnome Basket, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description or go to your favorite search engine and simply type in Moogly Simple Gnome Basket, and it should come right up. To make this pattern, you'll need 90 yards of Bernat Plush Big. You use most of the skein for the base and the hat, but for the beard, you'll be able to make several gnomes worth with one skein. You'll also need stitch markers and a 16 millimeter crochet hook. The finished gnome is approximately seven inches across and 13 inches tall, but I've got a couple of options that we can discuss as we make our pattern. There are lots of tutorials for the different steps linked in the pattern itself, and today I'll be showing you how the whole thing comes together. Let's get started. And here we can see a couple of finished simple gnome baskets. And yes, they really are baskets. The hats come off and you can fill them with whatever you like. Treats, the junk on your table that you need to clean up for the holidays, whatever makes you happy. And of course, that means you can mix and match them to your heart's content. As you can see here, I used three colors on each one, or at least three skeins, I should say. We use one color for the base, a little bit of that white or off-white for the beard, whichever you happen to have, and another skein for the lid. You might also notice, if you look from this angle, that the green basket is one round shorter than the red basket. This because I found that the red yarn of this yarn, this particularly the red colorway, I believe it's called brick, had a little bit more yarn to it, just had a little bit more yardage than some of the other colors. This can happen sometimes in yarn. Um, it's usually due to the weight of the actual dye. It's unusual for the red to have more yardage, but it's possible the manufacturer tried to make up for the dye by adding an extra few yards. So as you are making your base, if you find that you run a little short on yarn, Go ahead and skip one of those rounds. It's included in the instructions and you'll just have a slightly shorter basket. Then, like I say, after we use one color for the base, we use a few yards to make the beard that we attach on and then a third skein here for the hat. And again, this does use the vast majority of the skein. Both the base and the top are worked in a spiral and the beard is worked back and forth in rows. So let's go ahead and get started making another simple gnome basket. So let's get started with the base of our gnome basket in whichever color you'd like to use. As I mentioned, we're going to be working in a spiral, so it's a good idea to have a stitch marker handy. Just make sure it's a crochet style stitch marker so it does open and close. We're going to start with a magic circle, but if you prefer, you could start with a chain two and then crochet into that first chain you made, the one furthest from the hook. Either method will work however you like to start your basket. I do have a separate tutorial for the magic circle on my channel. After our magic circle is all set up, I'm going to start with a single crochet in the ring. I'm not going to chain one because we're working in a spiral and I want a gentler start for this one. So I'm going to go into the ring and make sure that that tail end is on top of my hook as well. Then I'll yarn over and pull through. And then of course, finish my single crochet as usual. At this point, my magic circle is pretty well set up and you can see it's pretty small here. I don't wanna to have to pull too much on the tail. So I'm sort of setting myself up with a really small ring to begin with. Now, again, we are working in a spiral. So it is always a good idea to keep that stitch marker in the first stitch of each round. When you're working in a spiral, you don't have that jog where you would normally join. So it's really easy to lose track of your stitches. So with the first stitch marked, we continue round one by working nine half double crochets into the ring. So we yarn over first, go into that ring again, make sure that tail is on top of your hook, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So there's our second stitch and we just continue adding stitches to that ring. If you need to open it up by pulling on it a little bit, you absolutely can. We wanna have a total of 10 stitches here in round one. All the rest though are half double crochets. So continue putting half double crochets into that magic circle and I'll see you when we're done with round one. So here I've got 10 stitches into the round. The first one is a single crochet and the rest are half double crochet. So I'm gonna pull up on that loop, put my hook down where it won't roll away here, and I'll go ahead and pull on that tail end to close up our circle. If you can't get it quite all the way closed, that's fine. You can use your tail end when you weave it in to close that up a little bit more, but I like to try and go ahead 
and pull it as tight as I can. This is a very strong yarn. I've never had it break on me yet. I don't think I could. So feel free to give it a good strong tug. When you go to weave in your ends, you can simply use your fingers to kind of pull it underneath the other loops. It's pretty darn hard to find a yarn needle big enough for this stuff, but I do recommend when you've got it all woven in, if this is a basket that's going to get a lot of use especially, you'll want to take a little bit of matching thread and sew that end in right along another strand there. Just sew it right to another strand and then it won't go anywhere for life. But for now, especially since we're still working and we're not done yet, I'm going to just go ahead and let that hang. So I'll go ahead and get my hook right back in here. And now remember, we're working in a spiral, so there's no join. We're all set up to begin round two. For round two, we're simply going to work two half double crochets in each stitch around. So to begin, I'm going to remove that stitch marker and set it aside and put a half double crochet right into that stitch that I just took the stitch marker out of. This one can be a little tight, so don't be afraid to use the point of your hook to push on through. It will get a lot easier here after we get this first one in here. There we go. Get that pulled up, finish our half double crochet. And especially now you can see just how difficult it would be to see which one is the first stitch of the round. So now we want to make sure to put our stitch marker on that first stitch. Now, because this is such a big thick yarn, I'm just kind of marking that first loop. Whole lot easier to get the stitch marker just in there. So now we need to squeeze a second stitch right into this first one here. So we go right in there, pull it up, and there's our second one. And then we can continue all the way around. Like I say, after this, it's a whole lot easier. We just go to the next stitch and put two half double crochets in there and continue doing that all the way around. If you find that your fabric is starting to bowl up really tightly on you and that a little tug doesn't flatten it back out, you see how mine just flattened back out? If yours won't flatten back up and it really wants to curl up, then make sure, let me see, where am I? Got one, two there, one, two there. So I'm ready for the next stitch. Make sure that when you finish your stitch, we pull up this loop, we yarn over and pull through all three. Make sure you give that stitch right there a little bit of a tug. This active loop at the top before we start to stitch forms the loop at the top of our stitch. And if that's too tight, it can pull our fabric really tightly. So I like to just give those a little tug as I go and make sure that they're coming out nice and flat. Here we are at the end of round two. Since we had 10 stitches in round one, we'll have 20 stitches at the end of round two. Again, I'm not going to join, so it's important that we have that first stitch marked. For round three, we work a half double crochet in the next stitch, and then two half double crochets in the stitch after that, and then that repeats one, then two, one, then two, all the way around. So let's go ahead and get started together. I'm going to set that stitch marker to the side, and make sure to put one half double crochet in the next stitch. And this is our first one, so I want to make sure to get that marked. There we go. If you don't have stitch markers, you can go ahead and just pull out a safety pin um, or even just another scrap of yarn that you can sort of bow tie on there as you go. So there's one in our first stitch. We want two in the second stitch. One and two. And then we repeat that pattern. One in the next stitch, one, and then two in the stitch after that, one and two. So this is so far a pretty standard flat circle repeat. We had 10 stitches in our first round, 20 in our second round, and at the end of round three, you should have a total of 30 stitches. And here we are at the end of round three. You can see with just three rounds how big this basket is. However, if you want a smaller version of this basket, feel free to try a smaller yarn, and I'd recommend Bernat Plush. We're using Bernat Plush Big here. Bernat Plush will give you the same look in a much thinner yarn. So you can make a tiny little gnome with this one if you prefer. That said, let's continue with our big guy here. Round four is, I think, a really phenomenal round. And this sounds kind of silly to say, we're going to be working even and we're going to be working half double crochets again, but we're going to go into the back loop only and the back third loop for each stitch. And the reason this is so phenomenal is it because it creates a really fantastically sturdy base for our basket. Um, let me show you what that looks like here. So we're going to go ahead and take out that stitch marker again, get that out of our way for our first stitch here. Then of course we need to yarn over because it's a half double crochet. We look to the next stitch. Now when we look at the top of a stitch, let me pull all this out of the way here. 
When we look at the top of a stitch, there are two loops, right? That V has two loops. The front loop is the one closest to us, the crocheter. The back loop is the one furthest away. And the back third loop on a half double crochet is that horizontal loop right there on the back of our fabric away from us. So as we make each of these stitches, we wanna pick up that back loop and that back third loop behind it. So let's do that together. I've got my yarn over ready. I'm going to go to just the very next stitch here, go under the back loop, and then right there, it should be easy enough to pick up that loop right there behind it, that third loop. So I'll yarn over and pull my loop up through both, yarn over and pull through all three, and take just a moment to go ahead and mark that first new stitch of our round here, or first stitch of our new round, I guess I should say. Get my hook back in there, and you can see there's that front loop unused. This is going to push all these stitches of this round to the back like this and create a really nicely sturdy base. I've used the technique of working in the back loop before, but I believe this is the first time I've done the back loop and the third loop, and I was just so pleased with the results. Let me actually grab one of the bases here real quick to show you guys. Here's the, here's the green one. You can see here, there's that unused front loop. And you can see it just, it sits so beautifully. It's Maybe it's hard to show on camera, but when you try it in person, you'll see this is just the sturdiest base. It stands up beautifully. It's incredibly flat. It doesn't want to tip over anywhere. And it just looks really nice and sharp on the table. So let me pull this back over here and continue our round. Again, round four, we're just working even. With each stitch, we find that back loop and that loop right behind it. So you can kind of see right there, how it's really easy to catch those two together. And in fact, I think it's a place that some people, when they're first learning their half double crochets, accidentally might mistake sometimes as that top two loops. But you just wanna make sure to catch that back loop and that loop behind it, that horizontal third loop. And you can see here already how those stitches are pointing up and we're getting that really great base. So we had 30 stitches in round three. We'll also have 30 stitches in round four. Just continue all the way around and I'll see you when we get to the end of round four. So here I am at the end of round four and you can see how our base now has its nice edge and it's all ready to sit on our table, but we need to make some height. Rounds five and six are simple. Half double crochet in each stitch around under those usual top two loops. This is just building up the height of our basket. But this is where we also need to think about how much yarn do we have left? We need to make rounds seven and eight to create the top of our basket with the nose. So if you find that you come up short on yarn, then round six is the one you'll want to eliminate. Again, rounds five and six are simply half double crochet in each stitch around. So you can go around once, or if you've got plenty of yarn, go around twice, and then we'll come back together when it's time for round seven. Now I've got the height I want for my basket, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to round seven. For round seven, we have a repeat that begins with half double crochet two together, then half double crochet in the next eight stitches. We do that three times for a total of 27 stitches in round seven. So let's go ahead and start this one together as well. We'll take out our stitch marker and get out of the way here. You can see it already wants to be a basket. I'm gonna kind of flip it over here so I can keep working from the right side and we start with a half double crochet two together. So the way I like to do this is a little different from the standard. You can use whichever method of half double crochet two together you prefer. Again, this one is not the standard way, I just find I like it a little better. I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then rather than yarning over again, I'm just going to go right to the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then you can either yarn over and pull through all four loops, or for this project, because it has such bulky yarn, what I really like to do is go ahead and pull this last loop through these three. Let's go ahead and do that together. There we go. So we've turned those two stitches into one stitch. And to me, this looks, especially in this bulky yarn, a lot more like that than it would if it had another loop there. So it is still our first stitch. So we want to mark it with our stitch marker. There we are. And then we simply half double crochet in the next eight and then do that again. Half double crochet two together, half double crochet in the next eight, and continue that till we get back to our stitch marker. And then I'll see you at the end of round seven. As you can see, round seven pulled in our top just a little bit. For round eight, we're going to work even again, but we want to put a big popcorn for the nose. Now, if you start coming up short on yarn again on this round, we can certainly fudge it, but for now, let's keep going. 
We're going to start with that first stitch here, and we're going to start by half double crocheting in the next two stitches. So that means half double crochet in the first stitch. And mark that one. And then half double crochet in the stitch after that. Straighten out my yarn a little bit here. Then we single crochet in the next 11 stitches. So now we're gonna drop down to a single crochet for the top of our basket here. Essentially, we're also, while we're coming around and making our nose, we're also dropping our height a little bit as we come back so that we don't have that big jog from our um, from working in a spiral. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So what this should do is bring us so that that next stitch you can see right here is opposite, opposite rather, our stitch marker. This is because I wanted the nose to be opposite of any little jogs or anything from where our seam would be if we weren't working in a spiral. However, if you are coming up short on this round, you can go ahead and put the nose wherever you like and then just gradually taper down the yarn with whatever you have left. Let's continue according to the written pattern and we're going to start our three double crochet popcorn in the next stitch. A popcorn is um, something, it's sort of like a bobble. Bobbles are worked a little differently than popcorns. They have some similarities. Bobbles pop out on the back side of the fabric. Popcorns stay on the right side of the fabric. So that's why popcorn is a really good uh, choice for right here because we're working from the right side and we want our nose to stick out not towards us, not to the inside of the basket, of course. So to make a three double crochet popcorn, we yarn over, insert our hook in the next stitch, and go ahead and finish a double crochet. There's one, and now we do two more right in that same stitch. Put a double crochet there. Let me get my end out of the way there. One and two. I'll get that through there. It can be a little tight because we're putting three stitches all in one stitch here. There we go. Pull that through. And now we stop and take a look. You can see I removed my hook from my active loop after making three double crochets. You can see them right there. One, two, three. What I want to do now to finish our popcorn is we put our hook in the top of the first of those double crochets we made. You can see right there. I go under those top two loops, grab the active loop, pull that back down, and just pull that active loop right on through the top of the stitch. You can see that makes it stick out beautifully for a perfect little nose for our gnome. Then we want to just continue on around. We can single crochet in the next 13 stitches and then slip stitch and seam just join to bring down that row a little bit. Or if you run out of yarn, just get as close as you can with single crochets and then slip stitch and seamless join to the stitch after that. The next step is to make the beard for our gnome basket. Each skein of Bernat Plush Big should give you three or four beards at least. Now, I've got a little bit of a purple paper here because we've got a white hook and white yarn, so it's a little harder to see. So this will help us see our stitches better. We also wanna make sure to leave a long tail, an extra long tail at the beginning and at the end of our beard because we'll use both of those tails for sewing our beard on. If you forgot, you can of course go back and just add some extra yarn, but why do that when you can save a couple of ends to weave in? So if you can, remember to leave a nice long tail before you start your beard. Then we can go ahead and start with a chain of four. So I'm gonna put the yarn on my hook and chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then we are going to work a single, skip the chain closest to the hook, work a single crochet in the chain after that. I prefer to work into the back hump of the chain rather than under the front or back loop that we normally work under. This is going to give us a better finished edge for our beard as well. So again, skip the stitch closest to the hook, go to the stitch after that and work a single crochet, followed by a half double crochet in the next stitch, and then a double crochet in the stitch after that, the last one, right next to the slip knot or loop that you put onto your hook, however you like to start working in rows here. There we are. So our first row, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet. 
for row two. We're going to turn and we'll start with a chainless starting double crochet. This is my favorite double crochet substitute. If you have a different one you'd like to use, you absolutely can use that. I like this one because I think it gives a really nice look here. So I'm gonna start by pulling up my loop nice and high about to the height of a double crochet. Secure the top of that loop with my finger. Yarn over with the loop itself. Go into that first stitch. Yarn over and pull up our loop. Yarn over, pull through the loop and behind the yarn over. Finally release that top loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Again, I do have a separate tutorial for this on my channel if you'd like. That's our first stitch, it's our double crochet substitute. So then for the next stitch, we half double crochet in the half double crochet. And then single crochet in the single crochet. For row three, we want to chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you like to do it. We're gonna start with a single crochet in the first stitch. So single crochet in the single crochet again, half double crochet in the half double crochet, and double crochet in the top of that chainless starting double crochet or whatever double crochet substitute you like to use. There we are. So you can see how we're getting a really nice curve by working single crochets into single crochets, half doubles into half doubles, and doubles into doubles. So we're going to continue this for a total of nine rows to create this beard that goes all the way around the nose. We just repeat rows two and three, two and three, until we have a total of nine. So I'll see you when we've got our beard all made. So this is what your beard should look like after nine rows. Again, we're going to want to cut our end, leaving a nice long tail for sewing. There we go. Then we can go ahead and just pull up on that end or you can pull the end through to secure it if you prefer. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my purple paper aside and grab our basket base. Here's the one we've been working on. Actually, excuse me, that was a green one. Here's the one we've been working on. I was gonna say, where'd those tails go? I know I hadn't woven them in yet. I did come up just a little bit short on this foggy teal color. So I simply slip stitched and seamless joined as far as the yarn would get me. So you can see it still makes a really lovely basket. So now we're ready to add our beard. We've got our nose right here. And we can see on our beard, here is the inside edge with the single crochets. That's going to go right up around our nose like so. And then we can use our long tails here and our fingers or our hook to go ahead and sew it right to the top layer of the basket here. So I like to just sort of line up those three stitches together and then again, you can use your hook if it's easier or your fingers, whatever makes you happy to go ahead and pull those yarn ends through. There we are. It's kind of tricky to do. But you just want to take your time with it. There we are. We can go ahead and sort of pull that right through that next stitch. I'll get my hands out of the way there so you can see that. There we go. So I'm just sort of using my hook. This time I think I'll go through both those layers, make it a little easier for myself. There we are, just like that. So if you've got a big enough yarn needle, you could certainly do it with that, or if, again, prefer with your fingers or whatever, and you continue to sew that down a little bit if you'd like, or we can just go ahead and jump right over to the next side. And I recommend you do this side before you start sewing it down here, just to make sure it ends up nice and even. We can just take our end here, find those kind of three stitches on the other side here, and I'll start pulling this end right through here. Now, securing these ends is the same thing. We just wanna make sure that we weave them in really well and that we sew down the very ends, the end of the ends, if you will, um, when we're all done and everything's all finished and we know we don't need to pull any of our stitches back out. I always like to leave my ends for the end of a project, for lack of a better way to phrase it there, um, just because in case I do make any mistakes, then I'm, I'm not locked in, so to speak. So I'll pull that through there, you get the idea. Our beard is now attached on the other side and I can continue to sew that down just a little bit along here if I want to, or I can go ahead and leave that free and sort of flapping a little bit on our gnome, whatever look you prefer. All we've got left to do is to make the hat. And now it's time to make our gnome's pointy hat. We're going to be starting another skein of yarn here, and just like with the base, we want to start with the magic circle. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started here on my hook. There we go. And this time, I'm again, not going to start with a chain one. <laughs> Get that off my hook. My fingers really wanted to chain one there. We're just gonna dive right into that loop, pull up our loop, make sure the tail is trapped in there and get a single crochet made. There we go. 
Now we can go ahead and mark that first stitch. Again, we're working in a spiral, so you wanna keep that first stitch marked. And then we're also going to work two more single crochets into that ring for a total of three. Just three stitches here in round one. So there's our second one. And here's our third one. You can see this big chunky yarn, it wants to be a little wild. We just hold it down there with the magic circle. There we are, and that's all the stitches we're putting in round one. So we wanna go ahead and pull that magic circle up nice and tight. There we go. So we can get to that first stitch there. Now, rounds two through 12 of this top are all worked in the back loop only. So let's take another quick look at our stitches here. We mentioned that before when we were working into the back loop and that half double crochet loop behind. These are single crochets. Now we're going to be working under just the back loop of each stitch, just one loop. So let me get my hand straightened back out here. There we are, and we can be, go ahead and begin round two. Round two is going to have two single crochets in each stitch around. So I've only got that first front stitch marked, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that for right now. I'll go right under that back loop only of that first stitch and put two single crochets in there. So there's one, and I wanna go ahead and mark that one. That's our new first stitch. So now I'll go ahead and grab that stitch marker. Get that out of there. Put it in our new first stitch of the round. And then I want to go under that same loop again for a second single crochet. Now this will try and curve up towards you as you go. That's no problem. We just wanna keep flipping it out a little bit to create, because we're working from the outside of the hat, just like we work from the outside of the basket. So there's two in the first stitch. And it's okay to let it curl up at you while you're crocheting too. We can always turn it wrong side out at the very end, or right side out, I should say. One and two in the back loop only of that second stitch. And then right here, one and two in the back loop only of the third stitch. You can see that's really wanting to cup up on us. No problem, it'll straighten out here as we go. However, this is a, an important point to stop at. I'm gonna pull up my loop a little bit, bit here. Because this is such a pointy hat, it's really difficult to get back to the point to weave in this first end. So right away after you've worked round two, I would go ahead and say stop, make sure it's nice and tight, and weave in your end right now to secure it. Um, it's going to be a whole lot easier than trying to come back and do it at the end. However, for the sake of demonstration, we're going to pretend I've gone ahead and gotten that done. I'm going to go ahead and turn my hat sort of right side out here, like so. Getting myself straightened out, there we go. And we can continue on with round three. Now once again, remember that all the rest of the rounds for this hat are worked in the back loop only. For round three, we start with a single crochet in the next stitch, again in that back loop only. I'm going to go ahead and move that stitch marker on up. And then two single crochets in the stitch after that. One, and two. So that is our pattern for round three. One in the next stitch, two in the stitch after that. One and two. And of course, since it's a short little round here, we only have to do that one more time to finish up round three. So we can go ahead and do that together. One in the next stitch, and two in the stitch after that. One and two. There we are, the yarn was trying to come join the fun. There we go. So you can see that puts us right back at our stitch marker and we're getting that really nice pointy look for our hat. Round four, again, we're gonna start in that first marked stitch here, but the back loop only. We put two single crochets in the next stitch. So there's one and two. Oops, I forgot to move that stitch marker up. I know I've made two stitches, so I wanna go ahead and get that and put that in the first one there. There we go. And then we single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. So that is our pattern for round four. Two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. So at the end of round four, you should have a total of 12 stitches. I'll see you when we get to the end of round four. For round five, our repeat begins with a single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's our first one, and it's our first one, so we move up our stitch marker. Oh, trying to hide on me. 
There we go. Get that active loop secured. Mark that front loop. So single crochet in the next two stitches. There's one. Here's two. And then going back to our instructions, we work two single crochets in the next stitch. One and two. And then single crochet in the stitch after that. And that's kind of a funny repeat, but we do that so that we can move those increases around so they don't all line up. So let's do the repeat again together. Single crochet in the next two stitches. One, one, two single crochets in the next stitch. One, two, there we go. And single crochet in the stitch after that. Since we started with just three stitches, we've got enough for just one more repeat here. So let's finish that up together. Single crochet in the next two. One, one, two single crochets in the next. One, two, and single crochet in the next stitch. And you can see that brought us right up to our stitch marker. So we know we did that just right. And that's what it should look like after round five. We're just going to keep growing our hat from here. Round five had 15 stitches. Round six will have 18. For round six, we start with a single crochet in the next stitch. Again, we're still in the back loop only for this. Adds a little bit more texture and interest to our hat, I think. Oops, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the front loop only there so it's out of the way. There we go. So single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch, one, two, and then single crochet in the next three stitches. Might need to stop and pull up some more yarn here. This yarn goes through really quickly as you've seen. There we go. So single crochet in the next three, one, one, and one we just have one stitch in each of those three stitches. So let's do that repeat again together. Single crochet in the next stitch. There's one. Two single crochets in the next stitch. One, two, and then single crochet in the next three stitches. One in there, one in there, and one in there. There's just one repeat left, so let's do it together. Single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next. So make sure to count those one and two. And then single crochet in the next three stitches. We should only have three stitches left. I'm pulling up some more yarn here. Let's see, did we do it right? Yes, three stitches left. So we're on the right track here. One in that stitch, one in the second stitch, and one in the third and final stitch. There we go. So there's our 18 stitches for round six. For round seven, we begin our repeat with a single crochet in the next five stitches. So we go right in on that first one and move up our stitch marker. There we are. Then, so there's one, 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 that's our third one, our fourth one, and our fifth one, then two single crochets in the next. So one and two, and that's our repeat. A little bit easier this time. Single crochet in the next five, one, our second one, third one, fourth one, a little bit more yarn here, fifth one, then two in the next one. One and two. Let's do our last repeat together. One, 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 that's our third one, fourth one, and fifth one. That should leave us with just one stitch left if we did it right, and we did. 
one stitch left, so we put our two stitches right in that last stitch there for round seven. And that gives us a total of 20, excuse me, 21 stitches after round seven. Now we're ready for round eight, where we're going to be adding another three stitches. But we start with a single crochet in the next three. So here's one, and move that stitch marker on up. There we are. And two, and three, then two single crochets in the stitch after that, one, and two, and then single crochet in the next three. This isn't starting our repeat over. We have our increase right in the middle of our repeat. So there's two and three, and then we begin that whole repeat again. We start again with single crochet in the next three, one, two, three, and pull up a little bit more yarn here, two double crochets in the next, one, right back in that same one, two, and then three single crochets, or excuse me, a single crochet in each of the next three stitches, one, two, and three. So we've got just one repeat left. Let's go ahead and do it together since this one is just a little bit trickier. Single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Then two single crochets in the next stitch. One and two, right back in that same stitch. Again, back loop only for the whole hat. Then three stitches left, single crochet in each of the last three stitches. One, two, and our third one. There we go. So you can see our hat has grown really quickly. Let's continue with round six. I'm gonna pull up some more yarn here. We go through this skein pretty quickly. Again, depending on the yardage, you may have a little extra left over, but that's okay. For round, uh, we'd be on round nine now. We start our repeat with two single crochets in the next stitch, then single crochet in the next seven. Two, then seven, two, then seven. Let's go ahead and do the first one together since this one's a little bit simpler. Two single crochets in that first stitch. So there's our first one. Go ahead and mark that one. So that's the first one. We need a second one right in that first stitch. So there's our increase. And then single crochet in each of the next seven. So there's one in that one one in our second one, one in our third, one in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, and one in the seventh. And then we just do that repeat twice more, two in the next, then one in each of the next seven. So I'll see you at the end of round nine. So here we are at the end of round nine with a total of 27 stitches on our hat. So now ready to begin round 10, we'll be, we will be increasing by another three stitches. This one starts the repeat with a single crochet in the next two stitches. So let's do that together here. One, move up our stitch marker, of course. I know it seems like a little bit of folder all, but it really does save a whole lot of bother as you go. There we are. There's, there's one. Single crochet in the next. So we've single crocheted in the next two stitches. And then we work two single crochets in the next stitch. So there's one and two. And then we single crochet in the next six stitches. So there's one in one, one in two, one in three, one in four, one in five, and then one in six. So let's go ahead and do that repeat again together. Single crochet in the next two. One, two, two single crochets in the next stitch. Make sure you go back in that same stitch for the second one. And then single crochet in the next six. So there's our first one. 
Second one, again, back loop only the whole round, don't forget. Third one, fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one. So we've got one repeat left. Might as well do it together here after I pull up a little bit more yarn. You can see we're starting to reach the end of this skein. We've got just a little bit more to go here. There we are. So begin that repeat one last time. Two single crochets, or excuse me, a single crochet in each of the next two stitches. One, one, then two single crochets in the next. One and, whoop, drop my loops off my hook there. Let's get them back on. Pull that through, there's one and two. And then single crochet in each of the next six, which should take us up. We can always stop and double check, make sure we're in the right spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, we can just single crochet in each of those remaining stitches. I always like to have that stitch marker not only to help me keep my place and know when I'm at the end of each round, but like I say, it just lets me check my repeats at a glance and see, okay, yep, I'm in the right spot, or oh no, I've missed a stitch somewhere, or my repeat ended up, or my increase, I should say, ended up in the wrong spot. It's just a really good and handy visual clue. Saves a lot of mental space, and crochet should be fun. There we are. So we're at the end of round 10. We've got a total of 30 stitches on our great big hat here. And round 11 is going to be our last full round. But rather than just increasing by three stitches now, we're going to increase by seven more stitches to create a little bit of flare, at, sort of like a brim at the bottom of our hat. So to do that, we are going to continue working in the back loop only. And we start our repeat now with two single crochets in the next stitch. So that will be the very first one here as we begin. So there's our first one. Let me pull that loop up so I can move my stitch marker on up. Probably the last time we'll have to do that. There we go. So there is single, two, first single crochet. We need a second one right in that first stitch to begin our repeat here. So two in the first one and then three single crochet in the next three. So one in the next. So one in the one, one in a second one one and a third one. Real quick and short repeat so that we can get more stitches on this one. We begin our repeat again. Two single crochets in the next stitch. One, two, and then single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three. So you'll need to repeat that several more times on around the hat until you have a total of 37 stitches and you're right back at that stitch marker. Now you'll notice that our last repeat here, we've got two single crochets right there, single crochet in the next three, doesn't quite get us back to our stitch marker. There are two stitches left. That's okay, we just single crochet in the last two stitches for this round. You should still have a total of 37 stitches at the end of round 11. And there, now that I've finished that up, get my hook out of the way there, you can see how our hat has just a little bit of flare right there at the base and how working in the back loop only has created this really lovely bit of additional texture. So now row 12 or round 12, however you wanna put it, is where we just sort of finish things up. We're going to go ahead and still continue working in the back loop only. We're gonna single crochet in the next stitch, but I'm gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker on out of the way because this is our last few stitches here. So single crochet in that first stitch. Then a slip stitch, again, back loop only in the stitch after that. And then we can go ahead and break our yarn and seamless join. So let's go ahead and do that together. I'm gonna to pull out a few inches here. Go ahead and cut my yarn if there's enough left to cut. I had a little bit left at the end of this skein, not a whole lot. Then I simply pull up on the end with my hook there so that it comes out. And then again, I could do this with my fingers. You can do it with a hook. I think it's pretty easy to do with my fingers. I just find that back loop of the next stitch, send that loop of yarn right through that from the front, find where that loop of yarn is coming out there. You can see right there is the stitches coming out of. So I wanna make sure to send it right back in there. I'll just like I say, use my fingers and then sort of give that a little tug Give it a little zhuzh, a little hand blocking, if you will, until it blends right in to our outer round there. Then of course, we can weave in our end and sew it down with a bit of matching thread. After that, your lid's all finished and so is your base. And that's how to crochet the Simple Gnome Basket. Again, you can use Bernat Plush Big to make these great big guys 
or you can use a thinner yarn to make a smaller version. It's totally up to you. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.